This is Levi Turner with the Enterprise Architecture Group at Click, and this is the third part of a video series covering the telemetry dashboard. In the first part, we went over how to configure ClickSense to log telemetry-related information. In the second part, we covered how to install the telemetry dashboard that includes both the Click app that visualizes the data that is logged, as well as some associated files that are needed by the dashboard to provide insights. In this last part, we will cover how to consume that data inside of the Click app and how to approach analysis and action upon this data. So now we'll go on to the introduction sheet. So this sheet provides some high level information about how the site is configured as well as the application itself. So we can see here that for this site, we have the warning process time at one second, the warning memory threshold at one megabyte, the error process time at five seconds, and the error memory threshold at one megabyte. Now these values are far too low for most sites. This is from a test instance where we, we do testing on the application. For yours, it would probably be in the order of 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and one gigabyte and two gigabytes respectively. We also see here how much data the application is configured to, to show. In this instance, it's showing 30 days. That's the default value. If you'd like to configure it to show more or less data, you can go inside of the load script and go to the variables and config section and set the V number log days. So we see here that it's set to 30. You can set it higher or lower as needed. The next sheet we'll cover is the dashboard sheet. So this provides high level KPIs of the telemetry data that's actually in the application. So we can see here we have KPIs that link to various sheets. Uh, we can also see that we get a general sense of the relative expensiveness of applications. If we expand this out, we will see that the 31 large app takes up about 74 gigabytes to open from disk to memory and other applications take appreciably less. This is a good good way of, of narrowing down to where are the applications that we may want to target for optimization. We get a slightly different slice of data on this, this visualization as well. On the bottom part, we get a visual representation of how much RAM is being used by the various members of the ClickSense cluster over time. Again, this is with the 30-day parameter that's in there by default, so we're only seeing 30 days worth of data. Uh, we can use this to narrow down into a time frame in which we may want to analyze and see what applications were being loaded and if those applications had any problematic visualizations or engine API calls. The next sheet we'll analyze is the details sheet. And this is the sheet that most users of the telemetry dashboard will use with regularity. So inside of here, we can drill down onto the type of activity that we're interested in. So the general benefit of telemetry is to focus in on the visualization objects inside of an application. Inside of this sheet, for example, there are one, two, three, four, five, etc. visualization objects on this sheet. Now, by default, the table is sorted by process time, which generally is the more preferred approach because you want to ensure that your users are receiving a pleasant experience. They're getting the data they're requesting in a timely manner and waiting around over 300 seconds is, is not going to be a, a conducive experience to people enjoying their consumption of data using Click. Now, you of course can sort by peak RAM. This is more likely to be used if you are trying to troubleshoot or debug a server that perhaps is unstable due to resource exhaustion, and you're trying to get a sense of which, which elements inside of apps are contributing to that. So this is the visualization object. Filter, we can also focus in on open app. Open app refers to the call to the engine to open an application. So you go to the hub, you click on an app, that is an open app call. Now, this will be predominantly focused on applications that are being lifted from disk to memory. So the first time you open an application, but of course, larger applications may take a, a, a large period of time or long period of time rather to open regardless. Um, applications that have extremely long times to open, for example, over a thousand seconds, these would be candidates for optimization in some way, either trimming the amount of data 
or potentially running scripts on the server to ensure that application is always in memory, warming the cache for that application. We can also do filters by the process time metric. So let's say we're, we're primarily interested in things that take over 100 seconds. And remember, we can use operators here like greater than or less than if we decide to, to do so. The other way to interact with this sheet is to go to the bookmark section and select the bookmark that's included with the app. This, this will actually pull in data from the last seven days on this sheet. So this is useful for regular check-ins to see how your site is performing. And you can check this after you've already op optimized applications as much as they can. You can get a sense of, are there anything in the past seven days that have been problematic that we didn't know of already? The next sheet in the app is the App Anomalies sheet. So this sheet is most useful when doing some level of drill down into the process time metric. In fact, it's required for the rightmost visualization. But this will give you a visual representation of the spread of how long it takes to render elements inside of an app. So you can see here with 3.1 large app, there are some huge outliers here, probably the initial load of the app based on what we saw previously. But we can get a sense of whether apps have just a couple of problematic elements like the 3.1 large app, maybe a couple of clusters of activity like this telemetry dashboard application here. Um, we can also see in the middle column another way of visualizing that spread of information, mostly the same as the one on the left, but, but slightly different. And it also can tell you the quartiles of the response time of elements there. The one on the right, I'd like to cover in a little bit more detail because uh, it's a little bit more complex. The yellow is the number of requests or percent of requests that are beneath the telemetry configured threshold, with the blue being the percentage that is above. Now, we also have a red uh, diamond here, which symbolizes the number of requests that were made against that app. So we can get a sense here of which apps are more popular than others. Now, in terms of next steps for this, this site, you can take it in two ways. You can focus in on the very popular applications and then make sure you optimize all the elements in that app that will get you a lot of benefit for the most users or you can focus in on the apps that are less frequently used but have a higher degree of problematic visualizations or calls against the engine it can go in either direction the following sheet is the expensive object sheet this will allow you to get a couple of pieces of information one to get a sense of what visualization objects are most problematic, most frequently logged to the telemetry logs. This will allow you potentially to develop best practices around those objects. Table objects typically are problematic and you can remedy those with like calculated conditions. Um, on the right hand side here, we've got another graphical representation of the applications by their maximum peak RAM and the maximum process time. We can see here that the 3.1 large app is, is quite large in both, but we may get applications that are more computationally expensive in one way and not the other, like this ClickSense uh, System Performance Analyzer app. It takes a bit more RAM than it does in process time, which if we're trying to optimize for RAM consumption, we'd want to target this application. The following sheet is the Trends by App sheet. So this sheet is most useful and do an anomaly detection on historical data. So you can get a sense of, on the top part here, where you have nonlinear growth in warnings or errors, nonlinear against the number of sessions. You'd expect as you have more sessions against apps that users will be more apt to hit objects that have problems. But we can see here that we have a spike in problematic calls against the engine that isn't necessarily linear with the number of uh, sessions we have. We have a slight uptick in sessions, but we've got a lot of problematic calls against the engine. So we can also, on the bottom part, analyze by application. This is most useful when you've had telemetry running for a bit of time. You can get a sense of where is the trend with a given app. That trend may go up or down, hopefully down, 
after viewing the dashboard, but it may go up over time and that could be due to increases in data that's in the application you're loading incrementally, uh, or it could be due to different versions of the application. You have a new release and maybe you have a new sheet on there that has different elements. So this sheet is most useful for getting a sense of trends by the app and trends of the server that are non-linear against the usage of the server. The next sheet is the app profiling sheet. Now this, this sheet is less useful to most customers. Uh, the intention behind this sheet is to be conducive to using telemetry logging as a mini load test. So we can drill in here, let's say by app, the 3.1 large app that we were looking at earlier, and we're interested in the user of myself, and maybe we're interested in this session. So what this will tell us is that 24% of the time, or 22.4% rather, of the time that I was interacting with the app, I was waiting for the engine to process my request. So this is going to be primarily used when running telemetry at a rather low level, like perhaps low warnings at five seconds or so. Um, theirs can be appreciably higher and this would be primarily used in a non-prod environment. In a lower environment, you may want to do a cursory test. Now, this doesn't replace traditional load testing where you get firm isolated metrics, but this can allow an administrator to have guardrails that don't require logging into a server and running a separate process. You can do this all inside of the hub, go into an app, open every sheet inside of that app, maybe do some, some interactions with various elements, and you can get a sense of the, the aggregated time it takes for you to do things and how much of that time you spent waiting. At this point, we've gone over all the sheets in the telemetry dashboard. So you as a user of the app may find different ways of slicing data and create your own sheets. If you think those are useful and you like to, to provide those back to the community, you certainly can do so. Um, in later versions of ClickSense, you can export applications without data, like so. And that will remove any data in the app. So nothing relating to apps, user IDs, host names, all that will be taken out. Feel free to post that to GitHub and that will allow us to see how you're slicing and dicing data and perhaps integrate that into a later release where we see real value to other customers. Now, some of these sheets may be bespoke and only useful to certain scenarios, but if you do find ways of slicing data that, that you find useful, feel free to contribute them back to the community.